Welcome back to another subboard review and as you can see I am surrounded by big red paddle co voyagers we are going to do the full voyager range in a sort of review stroke comparison video yes you should have seen me about 20 minutes ago trying and wrestle this 15 foot tandem beast into the studio it barely even fits so if it does fall over and squash me Let's just hope that doesn't happen. So what we've got here is the 12 6 by 32, the sort of more traditional Explorer, and then it's now the Voyager range. We've got the 13 2 by 30, that was also in the Explorer range, and it's now called the Voyager. And we've got the brand new for 2018, the Red Paddle Co Tandem, which is part of the Voyager range, which is 15 foot by 34 inches. The full specifications for these boards, the two smaller boards, smaller, they're still pretty big, are 5.9 inches thick, and the 15 foot is eight inches thick. 370 liters for the 12.6, 350 liters for the 13.2, so a little bit less volume, and 723 liters for the big tandem. Weight wise, the 12.6 and the 13.2 come at a very light 13 kilograms, and the big bad boy actually is not too heavy, arresting around 16 to 17 kilograms, but to be honest, we do find it quite hard to weigh because of the length of the board. But actually, one person can carry this board quite easily. They all come as standard with a central US box and an FCS 9 sub fin. The retail price for the two smaller ones is £1,049 and the big tandem is £1,649. The construction for all the boards is the same. Red Paddle could use their top end drop stitch with really good quality nylon weave, then finished off with their MSL technology. Remember that's two layers of PVC overall, but the second layer is bonded in one glue, so there's no glue residue or extra weight there and no human error either. Gives you basically a really light board that's really hard wearing. So moving away from the catalog stuff, let's go on to our subboard impressions. Now really this video alone is really going to be tailored more towards the two smaller boards, the 12.6 and the 13.2. The reason for that is because we haven't used the full 15 foot tandem yet properly. We've had a few goes around out the front of the studio, but really we're going to take this on a proper adventure with me and Lucy, my wife, and see if an actual married couple can actually get on with a board like this and see if we're still married at the end of it. So look out for that full blog stroke review soon but really we're going to focus on these two boards in this video but bear in mind the fittings and features that are on these boards are on all three of the boards so you can take that away from the review if you're looking at the tandem and you want to know that now so the first thing that's brand new for this year is the look of the boards now with everybody who's tested it it's a love hate whether you like the look of these boards i really like the uh, mapping contour lines on the front of the board some other our testers didn't like it so much but the colorways the blues and the greens really did go down in general but as always you guys know what you you like there is so many fittings on all these boards starting off with the big 13 2 because that is the one that has the most amount of gear on there you have a serious amount of bungee straps you can put a large amount of weight and a large amount of volume on the front of the board you've got bungee straps also at the back you've got your knobbly sort of bungee area which gives grip to so it doesn't slide around on the PVC underneath the underneath the dry bag there incorporated in the bungees on the Voyager 13.2 you have got your ram mounts up on the left on the front there and at the back there are ram mounts on the 12.6 as well but there are definitely more ram mounts and fitting features on the 13.2 because it's a longer board and you can put things in more places. The handles, the carry handles are all really well made, right across the board range, very comfy. And you've, they've, it's nice how they've incorporated them with the ram mounts at the front and the leashing point at the back. The fittings this year definitely have got up a grade from Red Paddle Co. They are very well made and they're very thought out and they're very comfortable to actually use and very tactile as well. A great example of that is for the deck pad. Instead of just having your standard EVA diamond grip deck pad that you have on some boards, this has got red embossed into the deck pad to give you a bit more grip, but really it just looks really, really neat. The deck pads are different for all three of them, so they've had to change the deck pads around. It's just another thing you notice from a brand point of view, having to put more work in when you've got lots of different boards in the range. The 12.6 and the 13.2 both have RSS battens, which is a rigid glass batten that goes down the side of the board in a pocket. That gives a huge amount of stiffness to the board. During our deflection test, we should where we put the boards in a gap of 1.5 and a weight of 75 kilograms in the middle. Both these boards only dropped 11 millimeters, which is not very much of a drop at all. 
Underneath the board, they've kept their nose and tail runners, which they've had for a few years. A great feature if you're paddling really shallow water and you can't paddle with a fin, gives you enough drag just to go in a straight line. The fin box itself is again a nice hydrodynamically shaped fin box to allow the water to pass. The fin for 2018, they've gone for the FCS Sub Series Touring 9 inch. It's a very nice shape fin, plastic, very hard wearing, doesn't catch on any seaweed. The thing to note this year is they have got rid of the FCS Connect system, which was the, the click-in system, which worked really well and was really easy. But sometimes in the touring aspect, if you sort of went down the river backwards by accident, sometimes it had a tendency to knock the fin out. So they've gone just with the standard US box fins for these ones. Looking at the pump, you get your Red Paddle Co Titan as standard with the two smaller boards. And actually with the big one, you get two pumps, you get a Red Paddle Co Titan and you get a smaller Easy Pump as well because you can actually inflect this board up two pumps at a time. The Titan, and many of you are aware of it, is Red Paddle Co were the first company to bring the sort of twin cylinder pump out. A really great pump and actually a great pump to have in a package, especially if you're pumping boards up of this volume. The bag is a fantastic bag this year, similar looking to last year's. When I first got it out, I thought it was the same, but actually I'm looking at it closely. They've got a really neat thing. It's a really neat thing at the back of the bag. You can take the Velcro off and actually you can get your shoulder straps out and actually go into a backpack. Or if you don't want the backpack, you can put them straight in, fold them up, Velcro them up. Really quick, really simple, and it really works. Okay, so looking at the shapes of the two boards, obviously one's longer, one's narrower, but what does what? So the 12 6 by 32 has a lot more volume than the 13 by 30. This is how we tested these two boards on the water. So here we are, we're gonna test the um, Red Paddle Co Voyagers. We've got the 13 2 here and the 12 6. The best thing we've worked out, we're gonna put a weight of, this bag's got 15, 16 kilograms in it, and that bag has got five to six kilograms in it, spare paddle, usual sort of stuff you take on an expedition. We're going to, Lucy's going to geosup it with the app. We're going to paddle down the estuary and then come back up, see what the readings say and also see how the board feels in general. So first up, 13 two by 30. So by doing that simple, quite quick test, we try to control as much as we can in terms of weather and tide to give us the best readings. Overall, the biggest thing we noticed straight away is the 13.2 did have a lot more glide to it than the 12.6, which is to be expected, especially carrying the same sort of weight. Over an average speed, the 13.2 was slightly faster than the 12.6, but there wasn't a huge amount in it. Generally, when you're paddling, you do feel that the 13.2 was more efficient, and it was also much of a drier board if you're paddling in chop and moving water. The 12.6 did handle a large amount of weight and actually felt more stable than the 13.2, especially in choppier conditions. But because of the lack of length, it did have a bit more water coming over the board, so your stuff at the front was getting a little bit wetter. The interesting thing when you're paddling these boards and you've got to bear in mind what sort of conditions you're going to paddle in with this, if you're paddling into wind, dead into wind, yeah, the 12.6 is a little bit wetter, but they both go into wind pretty easy. Downwind, it's the same. Maybe the 12.6 again, a little bit wetter. The 13.2 rides over the bumps a bit easier. Across the wind, this is where it all changes. So you're not going bang across the wind, but when you're paddling into wind, but slightly off the wind, the 12.6 was way more manageable to paddle in that situation than the 13.2. The 13.2 did take a bit more effort to keep going in a straight line, and you had to trim yourself a little bit more. And that's just due, to do with the overall length of the board being slightly shorter than the 12.6. It's just easier to keep in that position off the wind. The 13.2 did get a little bit more of a handful. So bear in mind, if you're paddling places, maybe you're paddling in places where there's trade winds and the winds come from certain directions and it's aligning with your coast and maybe it's cross on, cross shore, you might be thinking 12.6 might be a better bet. Which leads us on to who do we think the boards are best suited for and what sort of paddling would you be doing with those boards? Well, obviously you're gonna be doing touring with these boards or cruising with these boards. Generally, I would say if you're doing smaller touring hops that don't require so much distance and they maybe are in choppier waters, definitely look towards the 12.6, even though it's a little bit wetter on the front than the 13.2. The 13.2 really is a nice long distance cruising board, straight line, plod away and keep going. Weight wide of rider, obviously you can be any sort of weight from up, 
but for the top scale I would say about 110, 115 kilos would be adequate on both these boards. The 12.6 definitely has a bit more stability than the 13.2, so the heavier riders maybe look towards the 12.6. The 13.2 would be great up to about 100 kg of rider of weight. So pros and cons to the Red Paddle Coat Voyager range, but really looking at the 13.2 and the 12.6. Pros, well, you have got a very, very well-made product from Red Paddle Coat in 2018 that they have thought about and made better after year on year. The backpack is a prime example of that. Cons, you get double bungee straps with the 13 foot, but you only get front bungee straps with the 12.6, even though there are bungee points at the back there. Totally understand that they're not on because they're a little bit shorter, but it'd be nice if they came in the bag as well, because straight away we wanted to use a double bungee and we didn't have it. But, so you're gonna have to go to local, local hardware store and get some more bungees. Otherwise, a quite interesting one we noticed as well, the handles on the outsides of the board are further in on the 12.6 than the 13.2. So if you're standing with a wider stance on the 12.6, you might find that your feet are very close to the handles. It's a bit of a plus minus this one because the reason they have done that as we realized when we were walking up from our paddle is that because they are further in when you grab the board and pick it off the floor it doesn't drag on the floor because that board is two inches wider than this board so they've brought the handles in an inch either side just shows how red paddleco do think about every single thing so it's not really a negative but just bear in mind if you're a bigger person you want to have a wider stance you might find those handles just rub against the side of your toes Value for money, well, Red Paddle Co. are arguably the biggest ISUP brand in the world right now, and you have got a huge amount of value in this product. At £1,049 for the two smaller ones, you do get a lot of board for your money. They are not the most expensive, and they are definitely not the cheapest. But for the money, the amount of stuff you get, the board, the bag, and the pump, it really does fit a good price point package. Hope you found that Subboard review interesting and informative. Remember on Subboard Pro, we're gonna be looking at what sort of boards you can compare this to. Until next time, we will see you on the tandem later on this month.